Hey guys, Kelly here. Welcome back to my mechanic. This this next video is on an 11 Corolla with a 1.8 liter in it. This is going to be a four part video. We're going to show you how to do a front brake job and economy front brake job, okay? Which they pretty much call slapping pads. Uh, not very many professionals will want to do this unless you uh, know someone. We're going to show you the do's and don'ts on it, all right? The second part will be on how to overhaul the calipers. Uh, put a, a couple of five dollar seal kits in there to save you some money because each caliper is about a hundred bucks you know uh, third part will be on rear brake service how to service the rear brakes and the uh, last part will be on how to flush the brake system all right so uh we're gonna get it done right now and i'm gonna show you how it's done so stick around all right All right guys, welcome back to my mechanic here. We're here in our cave, our garage. We're gonna go ahead on this video and show you how to slap pads on this uh, uh, 11 Corolla. And um, there is no need right now to change the rotors. You can if you want to turn them, but this one actually doesn't have any problems with it. The rotors are you know, still in good condition. There's no uh, vibration at highway speeds or any speeds at all. Um, there's no hot spots on them, no heat cracks on them. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and replace the pads and stuff and also one thing to mention before anybody uh, makes a comment or anything like that is that there is a TSB back in the day that says that it's better to leave your old rotors on if you don't have any problems with them. They're still within specs, uh, no vibration or heat cracks as I said or, or hot spots that, that it's better for the pads to break in. The metal is already conditioned to the pad, so it's uh, less likely to squeak or anything like that. Um, that's what the TSB said, so I've never proven it, so we're going to do some here to uh, see if we can prove that. Okay, so. Now we're going to start by going ahead and taking them off. Since we're going to reuse that, the rotors and not turn them or anything because there's really no problem with them. And uh, they're, yeah, they're still good and stuff. Usually what we do is stick a screwdriver in here and, you know, apply the, the piston back in. And, uh, but we're not going to do that with this one since we're going to go ahead and use it and um, not take no risk on damaging the rotor. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, tear, it, tear it apart and uh, show you how that's done right now. Okay, what is it? Very simple system. Ever since the development of a, of a brake, uh, disc brake system, way better to choose. All right, so. Two bolts, that's it. Normally, I wouldn't hang, we just need to hang the, um, interesting, okay. The boot is torn, and we have a lot of contamination inside. We're gonna have, have to go ahead and put a seal kit on this. So, I don't know if you can see all the little bit of dirt in there and stuff, so it's, it's um, inside there, see. It, it is, believe me, it's contaminated and stuff. So, if we just push this piston back, it's probably gonna tear the seal in here, that seals it with the piston. So, we're gonna go ahead and do that since we got it apart right now. But since I actually pulled the caliper off without a, uh, retracting it because we didn't want to put stress on the rotors because we're not going to do anything with them. So we're just going to go ahead and push this back a little bit. Okay, just, just a little pinch. And uh, so we can mount this back without a problem. Okay. And since we're going to pull the caliper off, we don't want to empty the whole system because then we have to mess around getting all the air out of it. Sometimes it, it can be a problem. Not a problem, but it can take a few times doing it. So we're just going to pinch this off here, this brake hose. And the reason I put the caliper back on is so I can get the bolt. We don't have to go there or anything. Just go ahead and, uh, and crack it loose. There you go. Okay. Let's see. So just... Remember? Remember that there's a couple of copper gaskets, one on each side of the banjo bolt. In case you didn't know, this is actually called a banjo bolt. Okay. We're going to lose a little bit of fluid, but it's okay. I'm going to put this over here. Put it up here. And go ahead and pull this off now. Okay. And, uh, Calipers off. We'll finish draining it in a little bit. And, uh, let's get the condition of the pads. They could have still gone a little ways more, but I'll really make it noise. Got a little bit of, there you go. Okay. And just a tension spring, so it'll push the pad forward. So when you brake, you don't hear clack, clack every time you brake. Okay, so. All right. All right, guys. Next step we're going to do, before we fix the caliper, we're going to go ahead and pull off the anchor. Caliper anchor, and that's just got two bolts. Usually standard on Toyota, you need a 17 millimeter socket. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And uh, one thing that you should do though, 
it's just this one, the top one, just loosen a little, I'm going a little too far, just loosen it, okay? Because when you do the bottom one, if it's sticky, it could swing this out and injure you, okay? So that's why we got this one here. There you go. See, there's always the uh, possibility that when you take the, the bottom one off, it can do this and, you know, injure you or hit you or something like that if, it's, if the bolt is sticky on there. So, and it's uh, pretty much the opposite on the other side. Okay, when you take it off, it's the, uh, I believe it's the top one that does that to you, okay? So, it's not the bottom one. So, I could actually swing up when you remove it. Alrighty, rollers look good, yeah? No, uh, yeah, rollers look pretty good, so. We went ahead and uh, one thing you want to do is uh, try to lose the contact points, okay? Take your shims out and hit it with the wire brush, you know? Hit the shims and take them out and hit them with a wire brush, okay? We already did that. Put a little bit of lube on there. Hopefully you can see that. It's uh, not that much what's gonna get all over the rotor. You don't want that. I mean, it's not really gonna hurt it. But as you can see, we've done all four already. And also, you wanna make sure that the uh, the anchor pins flow properly. See that? Not more easily they move. And of course we did try to take it apart and lube them. And uh, put a little bit of lube on there. So they move freely. So the caliper, the caliper will flow, flow properly. And this is what we use for the lube. And you can use ceramic one, molly one, whatever one you want. Just make sure it says for disc brakes. Okay. Or for brakes. Also the, uh, the pads came with the heart with the, uh, the shims. I prefer to use the old ones. Because unless you get them from the dealer, I find that these don't fit properly most of the time. You actually have to play around with it and, you know, because they're not shaped to the correct form of the, of the anchor. So, that's that. And of course, apply a little bit of lube in the back of the pad, some like ceramic lube, you know, so try to eliminate the noise. Okay, that's, that's the idea. There is no inner or outer. Some have an inner pad, some have an and an outer pad, but these don't seem to be the same for both. One thing you do want to do though is you want to put the uh, the spring towards the back of it, uh, so it'll push the uh, the uh, pad forward. Uh, that way, if you put it the wrong way, it's going to push it this way. So when you break, you're going to hear a noise, possibly clack clack every time the pad shifts. So. And now here's our overhaul caliper. spin and you'll try to hold it with a regular wrench and it won't fit because it's too wide even though this is, this is a pretty thin wrench it's, it won't go in there so they do make special wrenches okay that are um, super thin yeah okay super thin wrenches and that will go there so this stuff one thing about these wrenches, never use them to tighten anything because they're thin, they will cut right through the bolt. It's just for holding them. Okay, let's get right there. That way, make sure it doesn't spin on you. You're actually tightening it. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, you want to make sure that the caliper floats properly, see that? Okay. It's not binding or anything. You're going to get an even pad work if it's binding. All right. Let's put the brake line back on. You want to make sure there's no debris on there. There shouldn't be anything good. Okay. All right. Now, usually you put new, uh, new gaskets, but on this one, we don't have any, so we need to reuse these. Should be all right. And obviously, we need to put this bender bolt so I want to grab on it. Probably won't be able to see this, but there is a uh, pin here on this one, okay? That has to be aligned on that. Okay. Go ahead and like, 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 like,